the magnet empath. The magnet empath is probably the rarest of the five cadres. Many people do not exhibit it at all, and where they do, it tends to be generally found at insignificant or significant levels. It is rare to find strong and very strong, and very rare to find an individual that exhibits it at majority status. What is the magnet empath? Well, magnet is, of course, a cadre, and it is an empathic individual who has certain magnetic tendencies which are layered onto their classification as a standard empath, super empath, contagion empath, or codependent empath. The magnet empath is a person that people find themselves instinctively and naturally drawn to. In a way, a good description would be to state that they have an inner light which is easily recognized by certain people, those that have a particular need, which of course can include both fellow empaths and narcissists along with normal individuals and those who are narcissistic but not narcissists. The magnet empath might be sat on a tube train when the person next to them will find that they have an irresistible urge to want to tell them that they are travelling to an important interview and that they are feeling nervous. The magnet empath might be waiting in line to be served in a shop when the customer behind them starts to tell them about their concerns and worries or about their life. Or where the magnet empath is sat watching the swans on a lake when a stranger will sit beside them on a bench and then start to tell their life story. It is an unusual urge that these people find. It's almost as if they inherently understand that this person can be trusted, that they will listen. But it's more than that. It's almost like a visceral desire to offload towards this person that they want to tell not necessarily because they believe that the person is going to present them with practical solutions. That, of course, is more the preserve of the carrier. But rather, the magnet empath imbues in people this sense of comfort that comes from disclosure and confession. If you find that complete strangers have a tendency to share intimate and private details with you at the drop of the hat, uh, that they feel a need to offload to you within moments of meeting you, and that they confide in you about their hopes, their fears, their problems, then you have this magnetic quality. The magnet empath draws those in need to them. This is because the magnet empath shines with an inner light which acts as a beacon of hope. And that is what magnet empaths embody, hope. I have often spoke about the fact that hope is a false mistress, that I am governed by logic and by action. But empaths are great believers in hope. Normal people are also considerable believers in hope. The magnet empath lights up rooms, illuminates the darkest of situations, and brightens the dullest day. And, because of this, the magnet empath is a walking beacon of hope. The magnet empath moves with confidence and purpose. There is no swagger or arrogance in the way that they enter a room, a contrast to the narcissist. This person glides. They are serene and elegant. You will not witness any timid scurrying or rolling shoulder bluster, but someone who is calm and assured. This individual has a clear sense of self, something which appeals to our kind, and this radiates wherever they are. Heads turn, eyes focus, and people gravitate towards the appearance of the magnet empath. People's faces light up. There is a lifting of the mood, 
and people want to be seen with and to be next to the magnet empath. Whereas our kind expects this kind of reaction from those around us, and indeed seeks and demands it, the magnet empath accepts attention with grace and humility. They are not shy, they are not reserved, but there is none of the bluff and bragging that would accompany the engagement of a narcissist with those assembled. The magnet empath moves amongst people with a lightness of touch, an encouraging smile, a soft hand placed on the arm, and hope shines from him or her. The magnet empath will talk about themselves, but in a manner which is encouraging and inspirational. Whilst our kind will also inspire, it is done from a platform of declaring one's own brilliance and injuncting people to be more like the narcissist. Those with the magnetic empathy will inspire by explaining that the listener is already empowered and that they just need to release it, and to explain that if the magnetic empath can achieve certain aims, then so can the listener. They emphasize the connectivity between them and those they interact with, demonstrating how, essentially, since they are empathic individuals, they are all cut from the same cloth. The narcissist, by contrast, will demonstrate how we are a cut above and use jealousy and envy as motivational tools instead, demanding improvement, whipping individuals into action for fear of the consequences of not doing so, emphasizing the difference between the narcissist and the listener and indicating heavily that the listener needs to shape up or ship out, go big or go home, if he or she is to achieve anything. He or she is a content for others to share the limelight, or rather is content for others to share the limelight and indeed positively encourages it, which in contrast with the spotlight-stealing behaviour of the narcissist. But this also acts as an attracting factor to our kind. It is particularly appealing to find someone who is able to capture the spotlight but does not wish to hog it, which then allows us to camp onto it instead. The magnet empath wants to harness potential, bring motivation through the provision of hope, the instilling of belief and the raising of optimism. In effect, they pour oil on troubled waters. The late Diana, Princess of Wales, is a good example of a magnet empath. The magnet empath is not one of practicality, however. They will not assume the mantle of responsibility for an individual in the way that the carrier would, and they certainly would not push themselves to the degree of the martyr. They will not get their hands excessively dirty on behalf of another, but rather their aim is to cause those around them to feel better in themselves through their own innate abilities. The magnet empath will help, but is not going to pick up the shovel to the same degree as the carrier or the martyr. They're not going to ride into battle in the same way as the saviour. They don't fountain with fuel in the way that the geezer does. If anything, the magnet enables the other individual to find within themselves the ability to improve, to solve, to take action. This person provides panache and style, bringing hope through words rather than necessarily through actions, a person who can influence in a positive manner the lives of many, whereas the carrier empath is a rugged and practical individual and tends to focus on assisting only a small number of people, sometimes often only one, and the geezer tends to interact with just one in terms of a pet project. The magnet empath can affect many people at once with their messages of hope and inspiration. This individual always believes in hope. This is what drives them and causes them to provide extensive fuel generated by this hope. They hope that love can conquer all and therefore they are significant love devotees also, not to the extent of the geezer, but noticeably so. They refuse to give up often flogging a dead horse, particularly where there is a combination of martyr and magnet, endeavouring people to overcome what is seen as the insurmountable. This hope often blinds those with magnetic tendencies to the reality of the situation and can cause them to engage in courses of action which invariably result in harm, not to the extent of a martyr, and they don't have the practicality of the carrier. 
The carrier is more likely to see that there is a problem and avoid it. The magnet is more likely to be blinded to it. Blind hope will often take the magnet empath down a path which can be exploited by the narcissist. They do generate excellent fuel. Their words are inspiring, uplifting, praising and complimenting. They are content to say all of these words and expect little or nothing in return, save that the listener grasps hope and secures growth and achievement. The magnet empath is charismatic, draws people to them, and is easily led by false exhibitions of hope. The slightest glimmer is something that they will latch onto in the expectation of improvement and seeing changes. Where the narcissist gives this person cause to hope, it will cause the individual to remain in the grasp of the narcissist as they dangle hope before them to keep them bound. Often, this person need not actually say anything. Their composure and general demeanour marks them out as who they are, which means many people engage with them as strangers, unaware that they are subconsciously drawn to a magnet empath. These people are sought after as inspirational speakers, people who present prizes, open new buildings, support charitable trusts and such like, and their popularity in this regard and the desire of people who just want to reach out and be touched by the magnet empath means that they will often find themselves pulled in many directions by many people and spread thin. This impacts on their energy levels as they feel often unable to say no to anybody, not wanting to extinguish the hope that they have begun to cultivate. Instead, the magnet empath will take on many different obligations and functions for a wide variety of people, with not only consequences for their own ability to deliver, but their interaction with our kind when we have ensnared a magnet empath. The lesser narcissist tends not to choose those with strong magnet tendencies, certainly amongst lower lesser and middle lesser. This is because of the envious nature of the narcissist as a whole, but also the less capable lesser means that they fear being overshadowed far too quickly and their resentment would be palpable, notwithstanding their seduction. Upper Lesser B will tolerate a sliver of magnet, and Upper Lesser A tend to look for more of it, because they will utilise that person's magnetism for their own aims, often in their capacity as some form of guru or leader. Furthermore, the lesser invariably hates the attention that the individual would receive with the upshot that the lesser would end up being ignored and overlooked. Unable to compete, the lesser, particularly lower lesser and middle lesser, would be repeatedly wounding, and notwithstanding the fuel that's provided by the magnet empath, this would not be enough. It is unusual to find a lower lesser or a middle lesser who has ensnared such a person with magnet qualities. The mid-ranger likes and also wants those empaths with magnetic qualities as they encompass those attributes, charisma, likability, people skills, which the mid-ranger invariably believes that he or she has and wishes to project to the world at large. Those with magnetic tendencies, however, prove to be a double-edged sword. The mid-ranger will struggle to resist the necessity of attracting and ensnaring a magnet empath naturally being drawn to this person from themselves, and also because they are prime material for the narcissist. But they soon find themselves awash with jealousy and envy once devaluation begins. During seduction, those traits can be kept in check, and the mid-ranger will appropriate the benign traits of the magnet empath for their own use. The charisma, likability, the desire to talk to this person will all be seen as extensions of the mid-range narcissist. However, once the inevitable devaluation occurs then the narcissist becomes coated in envy, which will manifest as prolonged and repeated sulking silent treatments. The greater narcissist is the one that's most attracted to the magnet empath. Possessing similar levels of charm and magnetism, the greater finds mirroring extremely easy in order to attract this type of empath. The magnet empath's popularity is also appealing to the greater, who basks in the reflected glory of other people's enthusiasm praises the greater for being with such a wonderful person, and naturally soaks up the motivating and complimentary words of the magnet empath towards him or her. Furthermore, it is often the case, particularly amongst middle greater narcissists, that they occupy a position of fame, and therefore they want somebody who is able to handle the fame with their own magnetism and charisma. They want somebody who is used to those circumstances, who won't turn into a shrinking violet. 
Upper grater and lower grater also value a person that exhibits presence, but it is the middle grater that prefers S as a majority compared to the others. It's also the case that the grater regards the acquisition as one which actually saves the grater some work by attracting additional appliances, which the grater will draw fuel from, hijack as their own appliances, and then turn against the magnet empath when the smearing commences during devaluation. The magnet empath is a popular person with many empathic attributes. Their energy level is not as great as other kinds, since they tend to engage more with words than actions. But that is not to say that they don't act, it's just not to the same degree as other types of empath. They also tend to have many demands on their time and attention, which will ultimately clash with the desires of our kind, resulting in conflict and control. This will not only hurt this type of empath, but result in them feeling torn, since they feel obliged to assist others, not just the narcissist, and this will result in the narcissist wishing to regulate those behaviours and isolate the magnet empath. Their capacity to draw people to them in whatever circumstances even when not consciously doing so, will also irk the narcissist considerably during devaluation and provides the narcissist with the grounds for attack and triangulation. An excellent fuel provider, both in themselves and the ability to bring others to the narcissist's table, and the magnet empath is someone that will hang in there, always strung along by hope, which is at the centre of the magnet's being, usually to their ultimate detriment during devaluation, and also in terms of susceptibility to post-disengagement or post-escape hoovering. If you would like to determine whether you are a magnet empath and to what extent, then undertake the empath detector, which you will find in the video description to learn whether you are an empath and if so, what your school and cadre is, along with more illuminating information. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.